The other day I had a big, big dispute with my wife, Brenda, my sweetheart. And let me tell you something, I really messed up. I really messed up this time. No, don't worry, I'm not getting divorced. Not at all like that. Being an alcoholic, like I've been divorced twice. I've been divorced twice. I paid child support for like 22 and a half years. You know, I went through the hell and back. Not much different than a lot of alcoholics. One of my biggest character defects or problems with myself is greed, money, greed. You know, and I, you know, you know, I used to count, go on dates and count the coffees that I bought for people. Or if I bought a chocolate bar or bought dinner for them, I, you know, I sort of make a, a ledger and say, okay, you owe me this, you owe me that. I was doing it in my head. And I get resentful at them if they didn't sort of pay their way for lesser words. So the other day, uh, Brenda, I told her I was gonna go and see my lawyer about a will and get the will changed. Because she told me a couple of weeks prior to that, that if something happened to her and I couldn't afford the house, I would um, have to sell it. So I was thinking, ah, she's not leaving me much. You know, she's not leaving me much. So I'll get back at her. I'll make an appointment with my lawyer and I'll go down and even it up. It went on, this went on, she ignored it for about two weeks. It went on for about two weeks. She kind of knew about it. I didn't bring it up, but I knew, you know, I let her know that I had an appointment with the lawyer on the 16th and I didn't know how to talk to her about it, what I was about to do because I knew it upset her. So anyways, we talked about it and it went over like a lead balloon, a lead balloon. And it, it, it crushed her. It crushed her, man. Like she said, Terry, this is what she said to me. I, I kind of laughed, it's not funny. She says, you want to even the score even when you're dead in your afterlife? You want to even the score? She goes, that's what I mean to you? That's all I mean? To and it crushed her, man. I tell you, you know, this selfishness, even to death do we part. It's outrageous the way I was thinking. You know, this woman, I love, she's the best thing that ever happened to me in my sobriety. Next to my sobriety, she's the best thing that ever happened to me. And here's me acting like a complete idiot behind her back, trying to undermine her with her financial security after I'm dead. Or who knows, maybe she'll die first. I don't even know that. And you know, these character defects, these problems we have in life will carry with us for a long time. I'm just lucky I have a woman that's kind of understanding about me. And she said that when she said, she said you want to undermine me. You won't want to make it even, even after even your afterlife. I felt, I felt like King Todd afterlife. I'm not going to have no afterlife. When I die, I believe I die. And maybe I go to heaven, maybe I don't. But the moral of the story is, is that nobody is perfect. And we do things for selfish reasons, thinking we're protecting ourselves. But you know, I come from a place that I had nothing. I lived basically on the street. I come from a place that I was at the food banks. I come from a place that I never had really anything. And now that I'm sober for like 30 years, I have stuff I gotta get rid of and I, and I come at it like this, like a selfish little spoiled little brat. You know, I tell you, this sobriety business is always growth. Spiritual growth, growth as a human being is always under, under construction. We're always working on ourselves to make ourselves better people. We really are. And this is an example. I got 31 years of continuous sobriety and I still make big mistakes. And this is one of them. I should have sat down. I should have talked to her about it. I should have let her know what I was doing if she felt okay about that, which she didn't and just talk to her about it instead of acting like a complete, complete imbecile over it. Come here, Teddy, I'm just walking the dog. We're gonna have a little noise here. <laughs> oh, he didn't, he didn't attack the other dog. Usually he talks to the other dog. But that's all I want to say. Just a quick little video about selfishness, selfishness and our afterlife and how character defects and greed can influence our decisions in life, even when it comes to our loved ones. And we gotta watch out for that. We gotta watch out for that. Life is not perfect. But like I always say, it's perfectly imperfect. Always room for growth, always room to do better. Always room to do better. Thanks for stopping by, I'm Terry G. Take a second, please hit that uh, 
subscribe button, hit another, another second, hit the like button, okay? Just remember, sobriety's freedom. It really is, it's freedom. Number one, freedom. Thanks a lot, I'll see you later. It's a bit of a rant. Happened the other day, I thought I'd just make a quick video about it, tell you guys all about it, that we need to watch out and make sure when we love somebody, we do the proper things to protect them, not just from the outside world, but protect their heart and protect their feelings. Okay, it's important, it really is, okay? Thanks a lot, ciao for now, I'm Terry G, bye.